Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Um, you heard that expression, apple a day keeps a doctor away? I have heard that. Mm -hmm. You ever seen people that spill salt and then throw some over their shoulder? Yeah, I've seen that happen. These are all uh, old wives' tales. Who are these old wives, anyway? Well, uh, I'm married to one. <laughs> Ooh, I hope she doesn't see this episode. She doesn't watch anyway, so... I'm not touching that. Today, crazy old wives' tales. People still believe we are going to do some myth-busting. Are you ready? Yes. We better stretch. <laughs> Next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Ronnie. You know, given all the world's scientific advancements, one might assume that old wives' tales have taken a back seat to logical thinking, but there's nothing logical about the superstitions spread throughout society. And because these mystic fallacies promise to ward off evil spirits and bring good fortune, people cling to them like lifeboats. <laughs> <laughs> From carrying acorns to throwing salt. My mom used to do that. My mom. There's no limit to what people will do just to feel a little bit safer, healthier, or happier. And so now we bring to you crazy old wives' tales people still believe. Ronnie? Yeah. This one, I don't know. I'm not sure I'll never disbelieve it because okay. I did this. Pull out a gray hair. And two more will appear in its place. Oh, I, I, I've uh, given up on that, right? Right? See, all this? That's what happened. <laughs> so know. somehow the world has been duped into believing that pulling out a single gray hair will result in the creation of several more. Thankfully, that's not the case. Okay. Uh, as cosmetic scientist Randy Schuler explained to Today, there's no harm in plucking a gray hair. Uh, what you do to one follicle doesn't affect its neighbors. And if you're worried about uh, looking older, don't worry about it. They're going to appear one way or another. My mom used to tell me, you're sitting too close to the TV. Oh, boy. You're going to go blind. Yep. Though today this old wives' tale is entirely erroneous. There actually was once a time when sitting too close to your TV set could harm your health. Evidently, General Electric produced color TVs back in the 60s. We didn't have one. No, we didn't have you. one either. That emitted up to 100,000 times more radiation than federal health officials considered to be safe. And though the television sets were recalled almost immediately, the superstition remained. So, okay, Ooh. just to clarify this. That seems excessive. Okay, yeah, it does. Um, it seems to me that uh, with technology and the advancements that have been made, I don't think you really have to worry about radiation. Okay? No. So sitting close to the TV does not do you harm. Now, here's one that I definitely worried about growing up. Eating chocolate causes acne. I always thought that, too. I thought so, too. Uh, and I pretty much skated throughout my whole adolescence without much uh, acne. Uh, so, though some studies have proven there to be a link between, between increased chocolate consumption and breakouts, most experts believe that this relationship only exists because of ingredients in the chocolate, like the sugar and the dairy, not the chocolate itself. Uh, there's little to no evidence backing the common misconception that chocolate causes pimples. But that's not to say that the ingredients making up the chocolate goods won't give you a breakout or two. So, if that were true today, this would look like a pizza. I freaking love chocolate. It's like my crack. I cannot stay away from it. Oh, oh, you got it now. Thank you. We're, we're looking at the playback on this video. And there you can't see it, but there's a square on my face right here. It's here every week. We just turned the camera on. And it went to Ronnie. It's the so focus. I'm trying to push it off on him. I'm not taking it. And you can't see that, but I'm, <laughs> dang it. You got your me. force field up, huh? <laughs> All right, next up. Cracking your knuckles will give you arthritis. Man, um, I tell you what. I don't remember cracking my knuckles excessively, but I've got plenty of arthritis. Yeah. I can tell you that. Yep. People who crack their knuckles constantly get unsolicited advice from strangers and friends alike about how doing so will cause arthritis. However, scientists have never actually found a link 
between knuckle cracking and arthritis, making this medical advice little more than just another crazy old wives tale. Now I will tell you what my, I had shoulder surgery and I have, uh, since my car accident, I have arthritis in my thumb really bad. And it could have been caused by the car accident. But I told him that I cracked my knuckles all the time growing up. And he said, now this is an orthopedic surgeon that said, people that are prone to have arthritis are more likely to, they feel the need to crack their knuckles. So it's oh, not it's a that, relief? You, right. It's not that one causes the other. But it's just that you get that feeling, it's kind of a stiffness and like they should pop. Yeah. And so people that are prone to get arthritis, whether or not they crack their knuckles, they will crack their knuckles. How bad is mine in my fingers? Ronnie will tell you, it's happened on the show. In cold weather. They kind of lock up. They, this one, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to put it in that position because it will lock. <laughs> but this finger... It will lock that in that thing, and and I'll tell you, there's nothing that can be done. Do you think that's I, from football, maybe? Yeah, or? I do. Yeah, I, I really so do. Too. And you know something else too, basketball. Yeah. I don't know if you know this or not, but when you're playing basketball, and you get a, somebody gives you a nice chest pass, um, if you don't catch it just right, it jams your fingers, and you've constantly got one or two fingers that are jammed. So one of my one of my buddies that I worked with played in the uh, Canadian Football League. Mm-hmm. His fingers are a hot mess. Oh, yeah. He was an offensive lineman. Bingo. I was just going to say, if you're a lineman. Yeah. <laughs> offensive lineman. He, oh, you get stepped on. You get fingers pushed back. They look like barbed wire fence. Oh. They're just crooked and naughty looking. I, I, speaking of which, I remember a time when uh, we were playing a football game. It was my senior year. Our quarterback was a junior that started. And on one particular play, he got hit pretty hard. And he came back to the huddle. And his finger was completely dislocated. And you could see it. It was bent backwards like this. Ouch. So like that. Oh. And you could see him. He just took that finger and pulled it. Boom. Blue 22. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did back then. Did you that rub was some dirt on it? Yes. Yeah, you rubbed That's some dirt on it. Get back do. in there, Nancy. Mm-hmm. All right. This next one. Eating carrots will improve your eyesight. My mother told me that all the time. And you well, know what? I ate a lot of carrots. And look. What am I wearing? Yeah. Well, I've never have seen a rabbit with glasses, so there must be something. You know, it's hard to find a good pair of glasses that'll fit a rabbit, though, Ronnie. <laughs> I think you're presumptuous on this. So while carrots do contain nutrients like vitamin A that are beneficial for maintaining eye health, mm-hmm. they're not the uh, corneal salve that many believe them to be. Okay. It was actually during World War II that the link between carrots and eyesight became so widespread, and the inspiration for the rumor was never related to health. Hmm. Uh, Originally, this rumor took hold when the Royal Air Force ace John Cunningham became the first person to shoot down an enemy plane using automatic automatic targeting in the dead of night. British officials facetiously credited the pilot's success to eating carrots in order to fool the Germans. Oh. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, Later, the carrot eyesight link further gained uh, validity in the public eye when sugar supplies became scarce and as such the British Ministry of Food made a push for more vegetables, fewer sweets with cartoons like Dr. Carrot gracing advertisements and billboards everywhere. Yeah. Uh, okay, our next up on our list of old wives tales that were myth busting today, spilling salt brings bad luck. Check this story out. I found this really interesting. The notion that spilling salt will bring bad luck, actually dates back to the 15th century. If you look closely at Leonardo da Vinci's painting, The Last Supper, you will see that there is a pile of spilled salt near the crook of Judas's arm, presumed to have been knocked over by the traitor's elbow. Wow. Thus, spilling salt is associated with bad fortune and corruption, and the action is even said to invite the devil in. Yeah. The devil. Uh, Even though the lot of that is entirely superstition and not based in fact whatsoever. As for throwing the salt over your left shoulder, well, it is believed that the devil himself stands over your left shoulder. And that throwing salt that way will blind him and prevent him from taking over your body after you accidentally invited him in with the spillage. Seems like that would just piss him off. That's a bunch of crap. That's what it is. Interesting story. Yeah. Bunch of crap. Yeah. 
Well, and then, and my mom did that. My mom would throw salt over her left shoulder. Mm. The other thing she would do that I found really uh, interesting, in fact, my wife does this too. If a black cat walks in front of you, they spit. They t- I've never heard of that. It's not, not a real spit, but yeah, my, my mom and, and Vicky does it too. So wow. it's, it's odd. Maybe my maybe Vicky got it from my mom. I'm not sure. That could be. Uh, okay, this next one. Terrible things come in threes. Let's see. Aretha Franklin. Uh, John McCain. John McCain. Um, somebody else died recently. I'm, I'm not sure who, <laughs> but somebody did. Somebody named Jim. Yeah. Pretty much anything can come in threes if you frame it a certain way. And perhaps it's because it's so easy to convince yourself of the fact that bad things come in threes. After all, this notion is exploring pretty much every time a celebrity passes away that this superstition is so widespread and believed in. Hmm. Again, I really think it's just how you... You can find enough bad things like, okay, two deaths and or an earthquake. There was an earthquake in Los Angeles. That's right, uh, that's right. Yeah, so there's three things right there. And in Tahoe, too. There was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, that's just a it's coincidence, coincidence. more than... More than yeah, super, it really is. It's wife's tip. All right, Ronnie, you're walking down the street, right? Yeah. We're on our way to the store. Yeah. I'm getting beer. You're getting water. Yeah. Uh, we see a penny on the ground. What do we do? <laughs> I can't pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bend down for a penny. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no. Maybe a, maybe a dollar bill. <laughs> yeah. Okay, a dollar bill. Yeah. We've all heard the superstitious saying, find a penny, pick it up all day long, you'll have good luck. Well, where did that come from? Long time ago, it was thought that medals were gifts from the gods sent down as a form of protection. Nice. And seeing as pennies are made of copper, a metal, the currency became associated with good luck. Hmm. I like it. Yeah, I just... And my mom would never... My mom was only five feet tall, so she didn't have to bend down far to pick (laughs) anything up. But she would only pick up pennies that were heads up. Yeah, now that... that, I remember that too. Yes. Uh If it were tails... No way. No, nope, not, not picking that one. Not up. for a penny. No. Nope. Uh, this one was mentioned briefly in the opening. Carrying a acorn around to stay young forever. What? Mm. I've never heard yeah. that. Yeah. So there's no special healing powers in these nuts, but many believe, regardless, that carrying one around will keep them healthy. Why? The oak tree is known for its unusually long life, and in hauling around the seed of this tree... People hope to achieve the same longevity. And instead of keeping an acorn on your person and hoping for eternal life uh, or live forever, try eating healthy. Yeah. Well, you know what? I carry an acorn around, but not for the same reason. I just, you never know when you're going to get a rogue squirrel. (laughs) You know, like Rocky and Bullwinkle. That Rocky, he was a rogue squirrel. He was. He was crazy. He was a rebel. Yeah, you flying and everything. Uh, if I came close to me, I'd throw an acorn at him. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha. Um, Boris uh, Badna. Is speaking of mentioning in the opening, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Why doesn't the doctor give you an apple when you get there? Exactly. Yes. Next story. <laughs> this one I'd never heard of, but I'm going to try it out next time I go to a Japanese restaurant. Okay. Sticking chopsticks upright in your food is bad luck. Who does that? Uh, I've never seen it done, but I'm going to do it now. Oh, well, then what's going to happen? You're going to put a curse on everyone in the restaurant? I'm I'm guessing... You're inviting the devil in? They're probably going to come over and knock my chopsticks down. Oh, that could happen. I'm not sure. But uh, as a general rule of thumb, you should never stick your chopsticks vertically into your food when dining at a Japanese restaurant. In Japanese culture, so it's a culture thing, uh, placing chopsticks like this is reserved for funerals only... And it's belie- a belief held by many that doing so anywhere will bring bad luck. Hmm. I'm going to tempt fate. Uh, I do have a nice Chinese, uh, uh, Japanese restaurant that I enjoy. And so, what the hell? I'm going to give it a go. Are you pretty good with the sticks? No, not really. I'm not either. No. I usually get chopsticks and a spork or whatever the hell they have. You know, I don't understand. You're eating rice. Right. Why would you use chopsticks? One freaking grain at a time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I use them more like a shovel yeah. and try to scoop up a, a big big enough portion. I use my fork to scoop the stuff on the sticks. 
<laughs> All right, next up, tur turkey makes you tired. If you find yourself drifting off after a big tea day dinner this year, don't go blaming it on the turkey. Mm. It's a commonly held misconception that stuffing your face with turkey makes you tired, but it's more likely all the carbohydrates and alcohol you're consuming uh, are making, is what making you tired after dinner. So I don't know. I thought that, and I, I saw this on Seinfeld, so it's got to be true. Uh, turkey has tryptophan mm -hmm. in it, which is something that apparently can make you tired. Now, mm -hmm. I, and carbohydrates actually don't make you tired. They do the opposite. Carbohydrates are your source of energy. So alcohol I get. Alcohol is a depressant, mm -hmm. but carbs, mm, not so much. Turkey, mm, tryptophan. So, well, are you disputing this right I'm, now? I'm going to dispute this one. Okay, so then are we going to agree to disagree? <laughs> I think we're going to have to agree to disagree. <laughs> I don't care. I just happen to draw that one in the every other thing that we do. So, I don't care. <laughs> now, this one, this one I may also have to disagree with. Okay. Foods containing mayonnaise spoil faster. Uh, combining your leftover chicken with mayonnaise to make a chicken salad won't make it spoil faster. On the contrary, mayonnaise is actually an acidic food with low pH, meaning that bacteria aren't attracted to it. Hmm. But you're not supposed to leave mayonnaise out at a picnic. Unless you're making special sauce. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's... Every time you see somebody that's gotten sick when they go to a picnic, it's you know like the potato salad had mayonnaise in it and they ate too much potato salad yeah so again i'm gonna lean a little bit more towards there still is a hint of truth to this one just give me some mayo oh i could eat a spoonful of it dab whiskey on a baby's gums to help with teething pain well parents in the early 20th century used to swear by this unorthodox teething method and somehow some moms and dads still pass this along to their kids today but whether or not this old wives' tale works is really irrelevant, seeing as just a few drops of alcohol can be toxic yep. to an infant. I, I'm sure my parents did it to me. I'm sure of it. That would explain a lot. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> All right, look, that's going to wrap up our list today of uh, old wives' tales that we have uh, pretty much, I'd say, maybe... 90%. 90%, yeah. yeah. We've dispelled. <laughs> yes. So we appreciate you watching. Hey, if you haven't already done so, uh, subscribe to our channel, would you please? It's very easy to do. You'll find it below, uh, along with the description and all of the uh, ways that you can find to, to get a hold of us. Email, social media, whatever it might be. Uh, my email address is lou at men are so smart. Mine is uh, ronnie at men are so smart com. Yeah. And when you leave comments for us on our videos... You watch, you will get a reply. Yep. Um, I have been um, recommitted to making sure that if you're leaving a comment, taking the time out of your busy life to do that, then I can certainly spare some time in mine to give to you with a comment, Ronnie, the same way. Yep. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, very exciting news. Wanted to mention that very soon you will see merchandise available. Yeah. Men are so smart merchandise. We're in the process of putting that together right now. In fact, I can show you a picture of the hoodie. There. Look at that, Ronnie. That's is handsome. That, does that look good or what? That is handsome. I'll tell you what. I got give me one of them. You know the thing about that hoodie. Yeah. It looks good on. It does. <laughs> looks good on. <laughs> looks better off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and so that'll do it. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corbett Ronnie. This has been Men Are So Smart.